Part C of Lab 19 is designed to show you how buffers can resist pH changes. And what we're looking at here, well, that's the data table that you see in your, your lab report. And for each part, C1, C2, there's a short video for each one. And notice they're using the same solutions each time, you know, water, the um, 0.1 molar sodium chloride, a high pH buffer, and a low pH buffer. And I'm just going to go and tell you that the first two are not buffers. The other two are buffers. And remember the definition of the buffer. The buffer is a solution that has certain salt molecules in it that's designed to um, resist pH change, whether you're adding um, some drops of a strong acid or some drops of a strong base, like you see there in C2. And all you're going to do is you're going to watch the video and you're going to see the four solutions and you're going to watch me drop uh, the different um, samples in there. So in part C1, you'll see me add some HCl and then part C2, you'll see me add some sodium hydroxide. And what I want you to notice is for the first two solutions, the pH changes are going to be very quick and very dramatic the pH changes, the lower two are going to be much slower and possibly no change at all. The indicator that we're using is simply the red cabbage juice that we used back in parts um, A and B of this lab. And so what you will see is that color change uh, will indicate pH change. Now just a little preview of what you're going to see uh, just in the first one. Let's just run through the scenario. The high pH buffer uh, that's going to have a pH of about 10 and what we should expect is that since we're adding an acid um, that wants to decrease to pH and what you're going to see there is that the color is not going to change very much with that um, high pH buffer the pH of 10 again because that solution has certain molecules in it that uh, are just good at resisting pH change and we talk more about sort of the chemistry behind it in the uh, lecture videos, uh, which, you know, you, you should watch before doing this lab. At the end, you will compare the colors before and after, and then estimate the pH change that occurred there. And simply put, if the pH change is very little, it is a buffer. If the pH change is a lot, it is not a buffer. Let's take a look at the experiments. So all I'm doing here is first off adding just a little bit of the sample of the water sodium chloride. Uh, pH 10 represents the high pH buffer and then pH of 4 equals the low pH buffer. I'm adding I think about two milliliters. It really doesn't matter as long as the, about the approximate equal volume of uh, each solution is in the respective test tubes. It should illustrate the principle just fine. So now I'm adding the red cabbage juice and what I would recommend you doing is to pause the video uh, every now and then and record the I would record the color and the pH but you definitely want to record the pH and all you're doing here is you're comparing the color that you see down in the test tube from part C with the color in the pH scale up in part A that you see there now I'm adding the uh, first five drops of the HCl and what I want you to notice is in the first two test tubes, the color is going to change pretty dramatically um, with just the addition of those five milliliters. Whereas the pH of 10, which is way on the basic end of things, that really did not change very much. It may have gotten a little darker there, but not much at all. And so now the first two are already clearly in uh, acidic range uh, with the pH based on their color. 
the test tube with the buffer of pH of 10 did not change it too dramatically. Uh, to me, it looks like it's a little, it's close to neutral. I'll say that much. But again, pause the video, record your color changes, etc. Okay, here's part C2. Same samples as before. Same indicator as before. Notice that the water and the sodium chloride, uh, maybe pH of six or so is in between there, I think, between six and seven. Here I'm adding the first five drops of the sodium hydroxide. Again, pretty dramatic color change that's going to result in the first two test tubes. And the last one is really the one you're paying attention to. pH of 10 test tube is already at a basic solution. It's that acidic buffer, pH of 4, that you're really noticing. Is there going to be a change or not? And again, you know, pause the video where it's convenient where needed, record your color and the pH. Here's the second five drops of the sodium hydroxide. 